Angelina Jolie is back for Disney's Maleficent sequel that continues to rewrite the story of Sleeping Beauty's iconic villain. yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm revealing and explaining 12 incredible Easter eggs and details you might have missed in Maleficent Mistress of Evil. There will be spoilers, so take care if you haven't seen the film yet. At the beginning of the new movie, we find Aurora surrounded by her fairy subjects, conducting business as Queen of the Moors. The three pixies, though, have devised a secret plan to lure her to a surprise meeting with Prince Philip. Pinto steals Aurora's crown, and with the help of the other magical creatures, she leads her through the forest to a spot where Philip is waiting to propose to Aurora. The moment is a fun twist of sorts on the Once Upon a Dream scene from Sleeping Beauty where the princess's animal friends secretly stole Philip's clothes and led him to her. There's also a nod to Aurora and Philip's dance in Once Upon a Dream, when in the new movie Philip and Aurora embrace and spin around after she accepts his proposal. There's also another homage to a memorable moment from Disney's classic animation during Aurora's wedding ceremony, when the two pixies Notgrass and Thistlewit use magic to change the colour of Aurora's wedding dress, and argue whether pink or green looks better. This is a cute callback to when the red and blue fairies Flora and Merryweather argued over the colour of Aurora's 16th birthday dress. Make it pink. Make it blue. Pink! In Mistress of Evil, their argument over the dress comes to an end when the dress turns blue and the two pixies turn to the blue flower next to them, which is their fallen friend Flittle, and they both say the colour is perfect. Many fans were disappointed that in her first live-action movie, Maleficent didn't transform into a dragon as she had done in Disney's original animated Sleeping Beauty, but instead turned Diaval into a dragon instead. The filmmakers seem to have taken note of that though for the sequel by creating a scene where Maleficent rises from the ashes as an enormous dark phoenix, in a moment that recalls her animated dragon transformation. Now shall you deal with me, O oh Prince and all the powers of hell! <laughs> Just before that moment, Maleficent appeared to die when she was hit by a poisoned bolt from Ingrith's crossbow, which turned her to dust a la Infinity War. But when Aurora's tears of sorrow fell on Maleficent's ashes, it sparked the resurrection of her surrogate mother, who, as the last of the Phoenix's descendants, has the power of death and rebirth. Aurora's tears helping to bring back her mother figure is also a nice nod to and a reverse of how Maleficent's kiss saved Aurora from the sleeping curse in the first film. There's another callback to the first Maleficent movie in the scene after Philip presents Aurora with a tomb bloom flower, and Aurora goes off to investigate where the flower came from. After she discovers Queen Ingrith's secret door and stairway into the castle basement, Aurora hears voices whispering to her which lead her yet again to the cursed spinning wheel, just like they did in the first film. Of course, after Aurora pricked her finger on the spindle in Sleeping Beauty, Maleficent appeared and uttered her famous line. You poor simple fools thinking you could defeat me, me, the mistress of all evil. That title, Mistress of All Evil, ended up as the basis of the title for this Maleficent sequel. But what's especially interesting is that despite Maleficent's villainous reputation being redeemed in the first movie, over the five years that followed, Queen Ingrid spread malicious rumours about her in order to foment mistrust and suspicion between the human and fairy populations. In this live-action universe, then, Disney's animated version of the Sleeping Beauty fairy tale is like a fake story that Ingrith made up. I remember the story of an evil witch and the princess she cursed to sleep forever. The story became legend, but this is no fairy tale. And given everything else Ingrith does, in this film she's the queen who really deserves the title Mistress of Evil. In a perhaps surprising moment for a family-focused film, Queen Ingrith, together with her henchwoman, goes as far as to orchestrate a Game of Thrones Red Wedding-style scene. After the more folk are led into the castle's church for Aurora and Philip's wedding ceremony, Ingrith gives the order for her evil sidekick to release the deadly red iron dust to kill all the fairies inside. Start the music. It's a scene that brings to mind the notorious Red Wedding from Game of Thrones, with the Queen's guards even barricading the fairy guests inside the building to stop them from escaping the lethal toxins. And during the attempted church massacre, Pixie Flittle sacrificed herself to protect the other trapped creatures when she flew into the organ and, after being hit by a ball of red powder, was transformed into an enormous bloom of blue flowers that blocked the organ pipes, stopping the release of any more toxic powder. 
The way that Flittle and many other fairies turned into flowers or other flora whenever they were hit by the red iron powder reminded me of the scene in Sleeping Beauty where the red fairy transformed the arrows from Maleficent's goons into harmless flowers. One of the Moor's tree warriors also sacrificed himself in the church by using his branches to cover and protect the other fairy creatures from the poisonous powder exploding all around them. It may or may not be deliberate, but the moment feels like a nod to Marvel's Groot and, spoiler for the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, how he sacrificed himself by shielding the other Guardians with his branches when Ronan's ship was crash landing to the ground. We are by the way, Queen Ingrith seems to be inspired by an interesting character from one of the early Sleeping Beauty fairy tales. There are two parts to Charles Perrault's version of the story from the late 17th century. In the first part, a wicked fairy is the villain, but in the second part, the prince's mother, known as the Ogress Queen Mother, is the antagonist. And as her name suggests, she's a terribly evil character who, like Michelle Pfeiffer's Queen Ingrith, tries but fails to kill off her daughter-in-law, Sleeping Beauty. There's also a few interesting fashion-related easter eggs that the sequel's designers purposely included in Maleficent 2. Aurora's blue dress that she wears at the beginning of the movie as Queen of the Moors and the pink dress she later wears to her engagement dinner were both deliberately chosen by the movie's costume designer as tributes to Aurora's pink and blue dresses from Sleeping Beauty. And because Elle Fanning, who plays Aurora, wanted a little added something that specifically paid homage to the animated film, a Sleeping Beauty collar was added to Aurora's pink engagement dress. And Maleficent's costume at the beginning of the movie, with its greenish colour and subtle reptile pattern, also tips its hat to her animated dragon form and its green eyes and fiery breath. Don't ruin my morning. And there's a fun double Easter egg when Aurora argues with Maleficent about her upcoming marriage to Philip. What's next? You'll turn him into a goat. Hmm. That line pays off later when Maleficent turns the defeated evil Queen Ingrith into a goat. Oh, come on, that's funny. But it's also a reference to the animated design of Maleficent's horns, which were based on goat's horns. So did you spot any other Easter eggs or interesting details in the Maleficent sequel? And what were your favourite moments? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and hit the Gleam link below for a chance to win an awesome Maleficent Funko Pop. The giveaway runs for the next four weeks and the winner will be contacted via email. Next tap left to watch my Disney playlist or write for something else you're sure to like. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!